Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, you're gonna see us working on the millipede again. You know, I picked this up in a previous episode. If you wanna click on the link, you can click above. But we're gonna go ahead and see if we can kind of get this going, see what's going on, get the power, maybe rebuild the AR, and uh, change some stuff around in the power supply section so that we can see if we can uh, get it to work. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, in case you guys missed it, the last episode I actually restored this. This is the Ms. Pac-Man. We finally finished this up where it's uh, working perfectly. I rebuilt everything, rebuilt the joystick. Um, I actually swapped the grommet since we last spoke, um, but now it's working like, you know, the other grommet was okay. This one was really good. It's brand new and it works great. So we're gonna see if we can do the same thing maybe to this millipede. I actually have all the stuff to rebuild the control panel. We'll probably do that in a future episode. In this episode, we're probably just gonna get um, everything working at this point. Um, the control panel, you can see, you can even hear it and it jumps. See how it jumps like that? This needs to be rebuilt. Um, a lot of times you can polish the ball, but this one's so old and cracked up, you're better off just buying one. They're a little pricey compared to the two and a half inch ones on the centipede. This one has a three inch one, um, but I do have a brand new one. Um, let's see if I can bring it out here so you guys can see it. So this is it right here. And I'm probably gonna rebuild it in a future episode. We're gonna try to get it to work first before we actually rebuild anything. But this is it. Look how shiny it is compared to that one. You know, it's gonna look really good. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna change the control panel just yet. Um, it does have some like places where it's lifting on the side over here, uh, which I'm probably gonna just use tape <laughs> or some sort of tape that's clear to kind of get it down. But I'm definitely gonna magic eraser it first just to see what I can do. You can see over here, there's some blemishes here or like this will definitely crack. So I'm probably gonna tape that down as well, just temporarily until I get the overlay and I'm gonna redo it just like I did in the Ms. Pac-Man episode. So I will have a whole episode dedicated on rebuilding that. Um, I do have, I'll show you guys here too. I have bearings, so I'm gonna replace them inside where we take the whole thing apart. Use simple green, clean it up, put all the new bearings in there. And then I have the actual rollers here, which actually the ball sits on top of. Because right now, this one kind of jumps a lot and it's very scratchy, almost like sand is in there. I did order another button just to kind of match because this one I could polish up if I wanted to. I'm just gonna keep it as a spare, and then because it's so shiny, I'm replacing the trackball as well, which is super shiny, as you saw. Um, the comb buttons are original. I'm not gonna get new ones. They all work fine. They do flash. Um, and I guess everything else, um, you can see that uh, this was actually cut. It's in decent shape, but somebody cut it where this is actually supposed to wrap around here, and somebody took an X-Acto knife and kind of did a pretty good job and painted this black. Uh, so it is original. I may leave it for now, like I said, just to save on some cost. Um, but everything else is in nice shape, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do the restoration at this point um, where I don't even have to do the, the side art. I'm just going to magic eraser that as well and just kind of keep it all original if I can, as close as to original as I can. Um, this obviously has to be rebuilt, of course. All of them do usually because they just get rusted and messed up. So uh, let's go ahead. We'll pull this out. And we'll see what's going on here to see, um, you know, if we get power because I know we're having issues in the last episode. So I did uh, get some ARs from my buddy Richie. He gave me actually a few of them so I can test it out to see what's going on first. And then uh, we'll rebuild it uh, in a later episode. Okay, so we're in here and I changed out the clips so that they're a little pointier so that I can uh, reach it easier. I'm going to have to bury my head in there. I don't know if I'm going to be blocking the camera, but we'll give it a shot and see. And then... Let's see, I have this here. I'm kind of hook in there to see a little better. I see minus five, plus five. I just need to find ground here somewhere. Is it on the top? Ground, there we go. So ground is up here. And then let's do minus five first. And it says, Not doing anything really. Let's try plus 12. I see two point, and then I say three point, and it's kind of fluctuating. So I don't know if this is any good. That is not working right. I'm not getting voltages and they're fluctuating. So, what I'm going to do 
does not bother turning it on. I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out, test some voltages, and then, uh, you know, see if we can get it going just to at least get some voltage that's correct, so. Okay, I wanted to give a quick shout again to Richie. He actually gave me, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, I have six different ARs. This one here looks the cleanest, so I'm gonna probably try this one. Um, the other ones look a little rusted or whatnot, so hopefully we'll get lucky. We'll try the first one and see what goes on, and then uh, he wasn't sure which one worked and which one didn't, so he just gave me his whole uh, lot that he had. So I'll return it soon, uh, but let's go ahead and try this one here. That one looks the cleanest, and we'll see uh, if we get some steady voltage, and we can try swapping it out to kind of troubleshoot, and then we'll just rebuild our AR later. All right, so I'm gonna unplug it real quick. And let's go ahead and switch this one out. So I'm gonna take these off here. Try not to wiggle them, because sometimes they become loose. And I don't wanna worry about doing that, you know, where I give it a whole, I rebuild everything, and then it's a connector that's bad. So, I want to get these out. All right, so let's slide this out here. All right, so this has to be rebuilt for sure, I think. Looks pretty new, actually, but I don't know. I can't really tell. But I have the whole kit, and the kit does come with the uh, transistor, so we'll go ahead and swap that out. I did, I remember reflowing these on the back, but I guess it didn't work, so, oops. So I'm not really sure uh, what's happening here. So we'll definitely rebuild it. I'll put that on the side to do that. And we'll kind of toss in Richie's right here, just to see if it works. Uh, let's see, it goes on this way. So let me put that in there. I don't think I'm going to bolt it down. I'm just going to have it kind of loose in there because it's only temporary. But again, you know, um, what happened was I actually went to pay him a visit uh, just to hang out. And I didn't bring any cameras or anything. It was just to hang out and do stuff. It was pretty awesome. We had a great time with my friend who came along. Uh, but then I, uh, I was supposed to bring my millipede board with me and I forgot it. <laughs> so he sent me home with this. He didn't want to kind of I didn't want to go home empty-handed, and he offered it, and I was really grateful. So hopefully this will be what the issue is, and we can kind of figure out what's up. I'm pretty sure it's something on the board, though. All right, so that's all plugged in. It's good to go. Looks like the test points have hooks on them, so I'm going to go ahead and swap it. So... What I'm going to do is just swap these in here. This one is right here. And what this does is they have little hooks on here now that I can just press and hook on there. And it'll hold itself in place. So, all right, so that's it for DC. Go ahead and put ground on top. And now I'm going to go ahead and let me just untangle this here. I'm going to do this on minus five right now. And it's cool because I can hold it up this time to show you guys. But now it says minus 2.496. Before it wasn't saying anything on my other one. So I guess that's okay for minus. I'm not really sure. But uh, I may just rebuild my whole thing just to be safe. So now that was minus. Let's go to plus 12. Let's see where we're at. This is pretty dead on. 11.91. That looks good. And now I'm going to unhook it. We'll go to the next one, which is... Uh, I think this is plus 22 right there. Okay, plus 22 now has 24.07. A little tiny bit high. But it's still within 
what I need it to be. And this one says minus 22, so let's put it on there. And this says minus 24.14. So I'm gonna go with that. I think it's fine. Looks like his is working. So I got lucky. I picked the first one that looked good. Uh, it's really cool that it has those hooks in there. I wish I could put those on mine. <laughs> okay, so let me go ahead and um, uh, leave it on there. I'm gonna hook up the board and we'll be right back. Okay, so we have it here. I kind of zoomed in on this part. So I did take off the, um, there's like a filter board that goes on here, kind of clicks in and screws on and you have the cage and everything. Uh, not all of them have that, but mine did. I'm just kind of ruling out that it was that, so I kind of took it off. But I'm pretty sure it's fine just for ease of uh, testing purposes. It's easier if I just have it out like this so I can get to these points right here. So let me go ahead and just pop these back on. Just push it in there. There's one. There's the other. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. And on here, I think it says, if I'm not mistaken, it's minus 22. This one's plus 10. Uh, this one's ground, that's plus five. And then these other ones, I think are just colors. Like this says RGB. And then this one isn't that. So I'm gonna just test these right here along with these. And then this one says plus 22, so. All right, so let me turn it on, see what happens. But before I do that, let me hook it up. You can do it while it's on, but I'm just gonna do it ahead of time, why not? So I'm gonna hook on ground right there. I'm gonna put plus five right there. And I'm on DC voltage and let's turn it on. Ah, so now we're getting something. All right, that's great. So those beeping actually have sequential beeps, which tells you what error codes there are. I wasn't getting that before, so now I know that the power supply and the AR is fine. So I'm gonna switch around anyway, this is 5.126. Let's go ahead to this one here. It says 13.21, should be 10.3 volts, but I'm not sure if that's within spec. You know, we're learning together. I've never worked on uh, millipede before. This is minus 23.99, it's supposed to be minus 22. And this is plus 22 right here. And it's 23.48. So it's pretty much the same values. I'm not losing any voltage, which is good. And let's go ahead and look that up. I'm gonna take these off, turn this off. So it's doing one, two, one, two, one, two, over and over. So it's two sequential beeps. So I'm gonna turn it off so it's not annoying. And I'm gonna pull up on my phone. Okay, so I downloaded the manual and on one of these pages here, there's a self-test screen. We can't even get to that. And it does have tones that says, uh, you're basically having some RAM. I bet you there's some RAM issues on there. And I do have the RAM for the sport. So let's kind of troubleshoot and see. But the number of tones I heard was two. So it has one through 10. And then it tells you kind of uh, what failed RAM location on the PCB. So in my case, I had two. So if you go across, that's E2. So it's E as in Edward two. So let me go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is I have some of the same RAM. I believe it's 9114 RAM, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and piggyback another, um, I guess, RAM that I have in, you know, on hand to see if it corrects the problem. It may not correct it by piggybacking. I may have to actually socket it to put it in there. But let me piggyback it, see if the tones go away and see if we have any other uh, issues happening on this board. Okay, so I have the board here and E2 is located, I believe, you can see it, this is it right here. So it's kind of next to the CPU here in the corner and then 2E would be this one here. So I can go ahead and re-socket that. Typically, you know, they go in pairs. I might want to redo both of them. But for now, I'm just gonna socket this one, but for now I'm gonna just, you know, like I said, put the uh, piggyback on it to see. This doesn't always work, but the notch right here is facing the notch right there. So I'm just gonna piggyback it on there. Take some finesse. Right now it's kind of loose, so what I'm gonna do, I have to bend this. So let me see if I can get it on the edge here. I'm just bending the pins a little bit off camera, just to be a little tighter. So they kind of wrap around it so they hold itself in place. All right, so again, this is it right here, right there. So let me see if I can 
All right, that's a little better. So what I'm trying to do now is uh, line up the pins so I can piggyback it. Piggybacking is just basically just holding it in place. I think that's it right there. So it's good, I'm shaking it, it's not coming out. I'm just double checking that everything's connected. I look on this side. So you're touching the ends of the pins actually on the actual RAM. And that looks good. This one, this side doesn't look as good though. I'm trying to fix it a little better here. All right, that looks good. All right, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna leave that in there. We'll pop it in there. Hopefully the beeps will go away and we'll uh, continue, you know, trying to troubleshoot this board here. Okay, so we're back. I'm just gonna pop this on here. Let me take this out too. I have my flashlight here, so I can conserve battery. There we go. Um, so that's all in there. We know the voltage is good. Um, I'm gonna turn it on and let's see if you get the beep. All right, no beep. Cool. So let me go ahead, I'll turn this around. We'll see what we see on the front. Okay, so we're in front of it now. I just turned it around and I'm gonna turn it on. And again, we don't have any beeping. So that's really good. But it looks like we're getting some sort of pattern here. So something's going on where it's not liking it. I wonder if it's a pokey chip. Hmm. Those things are like 30 bucks though. And they do have reproductions now. I call them synthetic replacements because they're not real uh but hmm all right um let me go into test mode here there's a switch inside the coin door so let's go ahead all right so that's test mode and it looks like we're getting something here it says r4c2 so let me write that down okay not sure what that means exactly but oh now it's beeping so it probably got loose see that so the RAM probably got loose, the thing that I had on there. So let me go ahead and turn it off. All right, so I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and socket it. Okay, so we're back. So um, I have my desoldering iron and I actually um, changed the tips. There's a whole bunch of tips you could choose from. And this one's pretty thin here and small. Uh, but I actually changed it to one even smaller. So hopefully, you know, because these things are really tiny. So what I'm going to do is I want to take this one out all the way over here. I don't know if you could see that. This is it here. This is actually the chip I put on top that I know is good. So I'm going to put that one in there. But I'm going to find, I need to find the socket for this. So it's, let's see, two, four, six, eight, nine. And I just want to double check if these will fit here. Yeah, they're, they're the same amount of pins, good. So I'm gonna take a couple of them and I'll just put these to the side for now. And the reason you take a couple is because when you heat these up, when you're soldering them in, uh, they tend to melt and then they'll come out. So um, to retain the shape, you just wanna put two together like that, solder it in there and then, um, you know, do the rest. So. so I bought one of these. These really are not useful in real life <laughs> but for chips um, because they're made of metal and this is uh you know there's like a coating on here i can basically safely have it heat up with the with the blower and i can kind of just go like this so as i heat it up i'll just lift it up and hopefully it'll come right out um, it's a little harder when you're trying to get a screwdriver in i don't want to mess up the contacts or anything underneath or take any traces out or you know take it off unevenly I just want to basically go under here just like that lift up and take that chip out so I had bought one of these I had tons of these but I just tossed them out because I never use them nobody really pulls a chip like that but in this case because we're heating it up it comes out really easy so I'll give that a shot and see and then this thing over here I got to plug in um, I've seen it you've seen it in other videos where Basically, uh, you set the temperature and then this thing right here blows hot air onto it. So I'm going to desolder it first, then I'm going to gently just blow some hot air on it and use that chip puller to gently lift it up. That to me is probably kind of the easiest way to remove a, uh, 
you know, a chip without cutting it and doing all kinds of other stuff. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap this here uh, if I can to kind of let me use this real quick. So I kind of don't want that to be heated up. So just being a little cautious, that's all. But you know, it just keeps the heat off of them so they don't melt. <laughs> because this thing gets all over the place when it's heating up, it's just blowing hot air everywhere. All right, that's good enough. I'm gonna heat that up. So for now, I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm just gonna mark with my finger here. Uh, the one I gotta take out is right there. Should be fine. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my glasses. Now these are awesome. They're a little cheap, but they work well for me. I've had them for a long time and they have an LED light on them. You guys probably already have them, but I put the side things on them so they kind of go around your head. They actually comes with glasses that come here that you could just put on. But with the battery, I feel it weighs a lot and it kind of pushes down. So headband is the way to go. All right, that's good enough for me. So I don't think the other side is going to move. So I'm going to use the air gun on it just in case. called an SMD rework station if you're curious <laughs> but uh, let me take these off here okay almost heating it up some more heating it up some more over here all right came right out so yeah so this is really hot so be careful so that's it right there, it came out perfectly. I don't see any lifted traces or anything, so I'll let that cool off right there. And then I'm gonna let this finish cooling down. And then at this point, um, I'm pretty sure I can just remove this now. Just so I don't hit the other chips. I just want it to be you know, a little cautious there. Let me actually move this to the side here. This is barely sticking at all. So you can see it did protect these. See how it's a little brown there? That means it did protect me from getting under there with the heat. So that's a good thing. All right, so that looks good. I'm just gonna inspect it. Let's make sure there's no broken traces. So I guess this is where I have my multimeter out. Um, let me go ahead and turn this off and then I'll grab my multimeter because I want to make sure that everything's connected right. I don't want to take any chances that there's broken traces. It doesn't pay to put a socket on there when the traces are broken underneath. This one should go to that one right there and this one to there. All right, I would say that that's fine. Um, again, when we did put it in, it did correct the problem. So I'm gonna flip it over real quick just to look, make sure it's nice and clean. Looks good. I'm just gonna take this one out here. Just, just a little too much solder on that. All right. Extra gentle, I'm not pressing down at all. All right, let's get that socket in there. Okay, so I have the notch right here facing the right way. So 
going to kind of stick that in here. Looks like it's good. Let me just double check that everything's sticking out. Yep. So I'm going to quickly tack it on just so it stays in there. I'll redo that one soon. I just want to get the corners on there so that it can work. All right, I think that did it. This is the one I just did. Okay. So here too. Okay. So this takes a lot of practice. I wouldn't just uh, go and do it right away. And I'm still learning. Every day I learn about how to do things better. Um, you know, so that looks okay. I think that looks okay. Might want to redo that one right there. It's a little sloppy. Um, that's the one I used to tack on. I just feel there's a lot on this one too. I'll just redo those. I'm looking a little neater. All right, that looks good. And I did buy some new cotton swabs. I bought these ones. I was tired of these. I use regular Q-tips, and these tend to fall apart. These right here, uh, they just get all over everything. So I bought these other ones here. You know, I got like a hundred pack of these and they were pretty relatively cheap. If you want, I'll put a link in the description, but I uh, figured I'd try them. Why not? And then the other thing I bought was this. I put 99% alcohol right in here so I can spray it directly on. So a little bit of overkill, but whatever. Now this is cool because it gets it in there and you can clean without really uh, getting any residue or fibers everywhere. And you know, you can see right there, it's kind of brown. Right there, yeah. That's just the flux that's built in. Spray a little more on there. And that's it, it makes it a lot faster. Cool, so this is 99% alcohol, um, isopropyl alcohol. So let me put that to the side. And while that settles, it should be cool by now. Uh, that's it on the top. So this is it. Let me move it over so you can see. And then I'm just going to pop this off. That's the other one that I'm not going to use. And that's it. It's facing the right way. It's good to go. Um, I could do some continuity tests if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just going to stick the other ramp chip in there, though. This is the one. This is the old one right here, uh, which I'm going to toss. And it's uh, 9114 RAM. I got the same brand, which is AM, which is AMD. And see, you can see right here. And then these are a little weird. They have like two dots, but the notch is actually on this side. So I'll try to stick that in there. And there we go. 
RAM replaced. So I'm going to quickly stick this back in. Uh, we can kind of check it out to see if at least the beeping goes away. And then once we it goes away, we know, okay, that's fine. I just wanted to rule out piggybacking it. Sometimes if you piggyback, it doesn't always work. If the RAM underneath is bad and you're piggybacking it on top, I want to make sure it's completely new. So this is cool. We socketed it. It's good to go. Um, I really should have done that one while I was at it, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave it because that one's fine. So there it is, socketed, good to go. So let's stick this back in the machine and see what we got. Okay, so I put the PCB back in. I'm go ahead and plug it in. And turn it on, fingers crossed. All right, so the PCB's on. We got Neclo. Check it out. I've never seen that before, so that's good. Hmm, I wonder what this is. You see that? It's kind of like garbled a little bit. Yeah, pressing it. Huh, a little concerned about that. I don't know what that is or cross here doesn't look right. I'm not really sure. I got to try it in MAME to see. Anyway, it's better than it was, so let's go ahead and switch it. Looks normal. Huh. All right, well, let's try playing the game. See? Yep, you can see, I don't know if you could see that, but no, you can't. But down here, see they're both blinking now. I put two players, put two quarters in. Let me go ahead and shut the light off. That way you guys can see a little better. Nice. So let's try one player. And whoa, this thing is really hard to control. And looks like I can move up, down, left, right, but I can't fire. So most likely, let me see what's going on. I'm actually gonna open up the control panel here. But I think we might have fixed the, uh, the issue. Let's see here. All right, let's get some light in here. Hang on. I'm going to kind of turn it a little bit, get resituated. But to me, what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of messing with this. And right now the fire button doesn't do anything, so... I'm just going to check it and see. Let's try doing another game here. See, right now I can't press anything. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think it's just dirty. I'm pressing the leaf right now. Fires when it feels like it. So, um, I think I have some sandpaper. Let me check. Now, you're not really supposed to use sandpaper. You're supposed to use like a business card or something. But... I'm going to use 400 grit. You could use this wet sand as well, but I'm just using it dry. And I'm going to just uh, kind of put it in between, hold it down, lift up. Same thing here, do it again. I'll flip it around, do it the other way. Yep, it's working now. Cool. Let's put this up and let's play a quick game with this terrible trackball. <laughs> we'll probably have to rebuild it at, one, at some point, like I said. Probably not in this episode, but I will do it because I want to be able to play and soak stuff, so. All right, so that looks great. So let me see uh, if this works now. I'm going to put this to the side. Wow, all you see is reflection. So let me turn off the lights again. There we go. That looks good right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna choose the regular level here. Yep, works great. Check it out. So if the, if the button was cruddy, can you imagine the roller? Oh man.
It's so noisy. <laughs> like I'm trying to go to the right and I can't. Wow, let's try this here. Nice. That's what I loved about this version. It had the DDT over centipede. Wow, it's really, really hard to move to the right. So this thing is really cruddy. Now that guy I want to get if I can. It's my favorite sound right there. <laughs> I need to get that. That makes it slow motion a little bit. Doing pretty good considering this track wall is... Oh, I spoke too soon. It's pretty crappy. But so far the game looks normal. I don't know what that smearing was in the test screen. I'll have to kind of look into that. I think just missed me. Gotta get rid of these mushrooms here. Yeah. So it looks like the high score was already on there. Wow, 488,000. That's crazy. So right now I'm just dying for the game to end because this control is just horrible. <laughs> All right. Cool, I didn't even get my score up. That's how terrible I did. So 25,000 first time play. Looks like it's working fine. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. I'm gonna end this video on this note, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can start shooting the next video, which will be probably rebuilding the AR. Thanks again goes out to Richie Knuckles who uh, lent me that AR2. It worked great, um, it allowed me to fix my game. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to subscribe, just click below. Uh, I really, uh, you know, work hard on this channel. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that just, they're kind of lurkers where they just watch the video, but subscribe, you're gonna see, uh, you know, this is part two of the series. It's gonna be an ongoing series of me repairing this machine and restoring it. Uh, there's plenty of uh, footage and episodes and all that crap that you want to see on there. And uh, I really enjoy making this stuff. So, you know, consider uh, subscribing there. Um, if you guys are on Instagram or if you're on, uh, uh, Twitter, you'll see if you uh, see below, you can see a uh, Matt Dell's arcade on those. Um, but you'll see that I already posted pictures of this of me getting it to work, so it was no surprise. So if you're subscribing and you're following me on there as well, uh, you'll know ahead of time. I like to post stuff, just kind of little Easter eggs, just letting you guys know what's up and what I'm working on. But uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week when I'm uh, I'm probably going to be doing the AR where I'm capping the uh, I'll probably cap the PCB as well as the AR2 and get that all put to bed. That way I can give Richie his back and we'll have this kind of bulletproof at this point. Um, and then I'm sure I'm gonna be uh, capping the monitor as well, the Matt Shido. So uh, anyway, thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next week. Take care.